Hello and welcome to Art Show. I'm Craig Stover and today I have with me Dinah Higgins. Hi, how are you this morning? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Uh, you ready for today? I am ready. Fantastic. So a uh, fan of your work, I went online. Uh, hold on, let's get the right thing lined up. Uh, I went online and started to, uh, I took some of your work that I found really interesting. There was so much to choose from. Yeah. Um, I had a blast going through your website. Um, <laughs> so these these are in no particular order. And as a matter of fact, I know there are some pieces that go out of chronological order, but I was just so yeah. excited to hear what you had to say about them. Um, so this, I wanted to start out with this piece because I love this painting. I think it is just fantastic. It works on so many levels. Can you tell me a little bit about this piece? Uh, yeah. So this is part of my Ridge Avenue series. Um, I'm sure you're aware of Ridge Avenue in Philadelphia. Um, it's a long street. And um, it used to be the street that I lived on. Um, and I... Um, and around about around 2018 or so... Um, we, my husband and I learned of a plan to rezone the entire street. Um, and so it was sort of like just before the big redevelopment, uh, boom that's happening currently underway. Um, and so I decided that I wanted to make a series of paintings, um, about this street in particular, because, I found it a really interesting from a historical perspective. Um, it's a major thoroughfare that never had any planned development before. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you know, as you know, um, things in Philadelphia are fairly old, you know, um, lots of history there, early American history. Um, and so I became very, you know, sort of interested in the um, adjacencies uh, mm -hmm of you know old and new and you know just the sort of eras of um change that happened this, um this painting has so much going on for me you know the yeah. idea that you have the encroaching nature over like an urban development kind of a thing like it's encroaching but it's dead at the same time for me it's actually the details of this fact i love your details like the fact that you have the sky trail that leads out of the painting. And then you have these two little pieces poking it. I mean, it, it, the picture shows that it's a piece of something larger. And I really love that idea. Um, but this, the, this, this bramble is just so well done. My, my first question about this is what is the size of this picture? painting? Uh, this is 20 inches by 30 inches. Okay. All right. So it's a standard, it's a pretty good size kind of a thing. And yeah. uh, you work, you work in a variety of mediums, right? So I was thrilled to see that you you did years worth of spray paint work, but then yeah. you're also working a little with acrylics and oil. Do you remember what this piece is made in? This piece is is oil. It's oil on panel. So it's a very smooth surface. Uh, I was able to get a lot of detail. When you when you uh, prep your surfaces, do you do you do like the traditional layers of gesso and sanding, or do you do yeah. something else? Yeah, I, I, you know, I seal the wood um, with an acrylic polymer, and then I apply about three coats of gesso, and I sand with um, 220 grit sand sandpaper in between each layer. It's almost like a, like a glassine or something that you're, that you're painting on. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. so smooth. Um, yes. But so this piece, I wanted to show this one, because this goes back a few years prior, yeah. correct? Yep. And... Um, for me, this one works on so many levels. So you, I also saw that you did these banners in multiple times, right? You, I, I think I saw this as an ink wash drawing as well. I'm not sure. Yes, what. yes. This is okay. a water. I think this is just watercolor. Yeah. Um, ink. I, I think I used ink for the um, black um, areas. The quality but, of light really works on this. And I love the fact that you painted right over the deckled edge. I mean, I think that just really makes it a, <laughs> a wonderful object rather than a picture. Um, so I, I I just really, I wanted to, to share this piece because I thought it was just so, so simple, but so magnificent at the same time. Um, yeah, just, I, I love that, love that painting. 
Uh, do Thank you do you. you do you have favorites in series or do, do you not? Uh, uh, I don't really. You know, um, I I try not to. Um, but I I do I did I was really you know this is after I after my spray paint work and I was trying to find a reason to use um, traditional paints and instead of spray paint mm -hmm. and so I I I kind of. I kind of saw these banners as um, just pure color mm -hmm. um, and like flat, pure flat color. And to me, they're kind of like a metaphor for painting itself. Um, and so I, I had a lot of fun with these banners because I lived near a street called Coney Island Avenue in Brooklyn. And there's all kinds of like car lots and auto based, you know, businesses and there okay, so that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, there were so many amazing banners, and I got yeah. to paint many of them. So yeah, <laughs> it, it works. The geometry of the piece works really well as well. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I'm curious about your process in terms of is this uh, on site sketching, or do you photograph the work, or how do you go about that? Yeah, I, f I typically work from my own photographs. Um, I used to consider myself something of a flanous, you know, I would take these long walks through the city um, with my camera. And um, that sort of that stemmed out of um, a career in graffiti and documenting everything. Really? Yeah. So uh, I wanted to show this piece. So this is one of the pieces that it's a little astounding to find out that this is made with spray paint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. are you, are you using masks when you do this? Yeah. Or that's, it's all, um, I cut paper stencils out of paper. What do you and, do with the stencils afterwards? Well, you know, it's funny. I saved them all for years mm -hmm. and then, um, they didn't make my last move, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, that's but, a shame. Yeah. Well, <laughs> You know, again, talking about the idea of like sort of nature encroaching on an urban environment. But here it's like, I love it. It's like it's alive, but it's dead at the same time. So you have yeah. some of these really nice dualities. Are you thinking about that kind of stuff? Or is it to you is more about geometry and structure? Yeah, I'm really interested in geometry and structure and finding compositions like ready, ready made compositions out mm -hmm. in the everyday you know, I'm sort of interested in the non-heroic landscape. So I guess this is maybe like with the stock exchange building in the back, maybe a little heroic, but then there's a graveyard in front. So I, I think that's a title. Something has non-heroic landscape. I, that has to go somewhere and maybe yeah. your autobiography or something. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to see that because it perfectly sums it up. I really uh, enjoy that. Thank but you. I also wanted to show other works of yours like this one. I yeah think this piece is just fantastic as a study for layers and transparency and also just the color itself mm -hmm. the blues and uh, the yellows how that that works together uh -huh. what is there a story behind this piece? this piece yeah this is this is um a recent painting this is i've been delving into more autobiographical uh themes in my work um connecting past and present and this painting is uh, based on an early memory of um, sleeping in the front room of my grandma's house in Cleveland, Ohio, um, as a kid. And she lived across the street from uh, the, the police station. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. And, and, and it, it just, it was like, you know, when the street lamps used to be yellow and, um, yeah, so it's formatted as like a sheet of note paper, and I'm working on a palette that is inspired just by office supplies. Um, uh huh. Okay, that's awesome. yeah. <laughs> I'm curious when, say, somebody ends up owning this hmm. particular piece, do you ever make a point to divulge the story behind it, or? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, um, you know, this this is part of my letters to home series so there's a lot of narrative in these works mm -hmm. um there's, um they're all they're full that's basically what they are are stories um and and so that's sort of carried through by the the lined paper format um for this one um okay oh, sorry. sorry no it's Go okay ahead. all right <laughs> you still had something to say on this 
Yeah, I, I, I made um, a pen. I made like a graffiti marker. I filled it with oil paint, a mixture that I blended myself. Um, uh -huh. And, and so I was able to, to draw, to like physically just draw on the painting surface. So it's a, it's a wonderful piece and lastly i wanted to show this one because again this this rivals the first painting i i shared with everybody yeah. um there's got to be a story behind this yeah this is the view out of um i have a studio a part-time studio in long island city in queens right now mm -hmm. at the moment mm. um and this is the view out the window and it's a very old New York kind of scene with um, a, a, a neglected building and that's just being completely taken over by um, ivy um, and trees and weeds and just this burst of green um, mm -hmm. in this otherwise like very, you know, typical New York landscape. Mm -hmm. When I see this as a painter, all I see is the amount of mixing of greens that you must have gone through to oh get all those God. different shades. Yes, greens are so hard. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, anyone who can really mix greens, I give them a lot of credit. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I find it, it it has a lot to do with the other colors that are next to it, but I agree. I mean, they, they just don't make a regular leaf green, you know. They, no, but yeah, yeah. I really love that. <laughs> Thank so I, I do want to talk about your, uh, one of the questions I had for you was talking about, is your work autobiographical or not? So I assume that you're in the camp where it just really is. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is just my own viewpoints, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and um, you know, the way I look at the, the landscape around me, um, you know, which comes out of years of spending time in neglected places, overlook, you know, liminal spaces, I guess is like the hot term for it now, but, mm. um, you know, and, and for, um, you know, but it was still kind of like an outward sort of, um, you know, only sort of tangentially related to my life. And so now I'm, I'm kind of changing things up and connecting the past and the present and, um, and that that also goes for like the mediums that I'm using too, where I started with spray paint and masking mm -hmm. and I was a graffiti artist. So I had markers and now I'm building, I'm like reintroducing those mediums back into my current work now. So, so what, what got you started with, with the spray paint, with graffiti? How did that start? Literally just, you know, it was the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> it was <Not> said. <laughs> yeah it was like teenage boredom um okay. you know not fitting in um you know spending hanging out and I grew up in Columbus you know which Ohio which is uh still kind of part of the rust belt and you know there were like abandoned factories we would hang out in mm -hmm. and rail yards and um you know and I, I think I just sort of noticed it out in the world and I was like you know, that just sounds like something I want to do. Um, so did yeah. did the work itself, I, because I, I assume when you're talking about graffiti, you're talking about outdoors. Yes. Uh, it, was there always a pull to make work on mounts on paper and canvas? Or was there sort of an aha moment like I can I can do this? now? Yeah. So well, I was always into drawing as a kid um that came first um and i actually was taking art classes um uh from the age of 10 on saturday mornings i would go to columbus college of art and design mm -hmm. and take saturday classes um and you know my parents were very of that which is great um and i think the the graffiti came around the age of maybe 13 or so 14 15 um, and that was just kind of like wanting to be like part of a subculture. I mean, the nineties were all about subcultures. Everyone right. was in a subculture, right. whether it was like punk music or skateboarding uh -huh. and, you know, and then, and then I discovered like hip hop culture in New York. And I, um, I wanted to go to New York and, um, I applied to the, um, school of visual arts and, um, you know, I got a scholarship and at was that. Was that about the time when did you decide that you wanted to be an artist for your life around then? 
Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of had an idea of that maybe from like the first, one of the first like drawing classes I took, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I can do this, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and, um, I, and it make like, it just makes me happy. So this is what I want to do. That's fantastic. Did you ever have, uh, did you ever have a, a, a teacher or somebody who, who propelled you forward, who lit your fire of your passion? I mean, there's been a lot of teachers over the years. Um, okay. I, I had, um, you know, in grade school, I had Susanna Seta, who was fantastic. Um, in high school, I had Teresa Weidenbush. Um, I had um, Ken Valimaki and Phil Arena in, in high school. I went to an art high school and um, I had these, um, you know, just wonderful like facilities. Like mm -hmm. I was building sculpture at the age of 16. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it sounds like you have like a bunch of people that are amalgamated within you. Yes. I, I, I have a lot of, I've probably had maybe too much schooling. <laughs> 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 I okay. wish, no, I mean, it, it sort of complicates things, you know, it's like in high school, I had these two abstract expressionist teachers and they mm -hmm. were like, encouraging me to make marks and I just was like okay but like you know I don't feel it like inside of me because I'm right like, yeah I'm, I'm, it's a different generation like I oh I, I get it well yeah. I, I do wanted to ask you about the storyline in your in your work that you do yeah yeah so it's to me that's it seems paramount like that, mm -hmm. it, that it has to be there. Was it always that way? Or do you find it's more and more important in your work, or more prevalent, I want to say? I mean, I, I think like before I was really painting like this sort of objective reality, you know, like with, you know, the sort of like um, uncanny, you know, surreal approach, but, but, but now, you know, like something happened a couple years ago and it was like sort of a tragic event. And I just kind of thought, I just need to just kind of change everything and start over. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not it's the same. Refreshing. <laughs> it is refreshing. I needed a refresh and I'm not yeah. the same person I was before. Yeah. You know, yeah. Happened. I can see that in your work as it progresses uh, along the way. One yeah. of the, the things I definitely wanted to talk to you about was, um, the your start of your creative processes so yeah. you're in your studio you're going to want to mm -hmm. make something new what is it that gets you moving let me be very specific i i have some artists will tell me well my creativity you know springs from literature or somebody else might say it's nature or somebody will say oh it's liter you know it's it's i gotta go take a walk or something like that do you have mm -hmm. anything that's a go-to spark yeah, I mean, I draw inspiration from a lot of sources. I don't read a lot of fiction. I do read nonfiction. Mm -hmm. um, and I have like personal interests, like uh, with regards to like family research. And that's been sort of under underpinning a lot of my recent um, painting ideas. Um, you know, my mother was an immigrant. Um, my father had an interesting story, too. Um, and, you know, and, and I, I don't want to say I had a difficult childhood because I didn't, but like, there's been a lot of struggle and trauma in my family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, mm -hmm. um, um, so I'm sort of talking about that now, but, um, you know, and then I do studies, like I'll kind of think of like a composition in my mind before it was mostly like photo based, um, you know, sort of. Um, I was really interested in like documentary photography and street photography, which I studied in graduate school. Mm -hmm. And and so I've moved away from that where now I'm kind of pulling sources from just various like disparate, you know, I found like a photo book of um, a photographer who was at the same in the same refugee camp as my mother. And so I've been like pulling from some imagery from that book. Um, and then, you know, sort of my own ph photography. So it it's, yeah, I mean, I guess it, <laughs> all that to say, you know, uh, it takes me a while to make a painting anymore. Like I'll sit down and do a sketch in a sketchbook and then mm -hmm. I'll do a study. Um, 
And did you find it's taking longer now to make, make work? It is taking longer. Yeah, it is. So but more, maybe more satisfying. Towards more the satisfying. End. Yeah. And I, and I'm just, I'm, pl- I'm really just playing. I'm experimenting a lot and opening up my, my practice and playing with all sorts of painting, um, you know, and bringing the spray paint and the stenciling back has been fun, um, mm. really exciting to do. So I, I want to ask you a question I love to talk to artists about is about mm. your viewers, people who mm. look at your work. Mm-hmm. When you're making something new, yeah, how much uh, do the viewers come into your thought process? I mean, I want to say that they they don't. But I'm always thinking about, I'm always thinking about my audience, you know, or what, you know, what people have related to in the past, um, always kind of influences me, you know, I I think, I think art is a conversation, you know, between a person and the, and the larger culture around them. And um, yeah, I want, I want, you know, I want my art to be like personal, but I also want people to like relate to it on their own level. What do you hope that they would walk away with? Um, maybe just, I mean, right now it's like probably like the feeling of like maybe nostalgia and also a little anxiety. <laughs> okay. <laughs> about the future. I get it. No, your work does have like a little bit of attention to it. So you know it works like because i walk away with that a little bit thank you yeah Yeah. someone someone who was helping me write about it called it um quiet dread (laughs) (laughs) quick patent pending like (laughs) yeah (laughs) when when you're uh making a a, say a new painting um Mm. it when you're in the middle of it yeah one of the questions i love to ask artists is where is your headspace? In other words, are you so in the zone, everything is blocked out, or are you so super focused? Um, you know, I think it was easier to be in the zone when I was doing the oil painting because it it's very like methodical, you know, mm-hmm. like layer by layer. I would, you know, and I'd work, you know, I was doing those oil paintings using the old master technique so fat over lean and Mm. underpainting and and glazing and um and then I could really just kind of like work and forget about what's going on Mm -hmm. and now I'm sort of building a painting differently so um you know it's kind of like put down put down one element of the composition step back look at it for a long time think about it walk away for a little bit, come back. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, but, you know, when I'm, when I'm just kind of moving my hand, um, like cutting a stencil, I can really zone out and forget <laughs> what time it is when I'm doing that. So, <laughs> <laughs> How often are you in your studio then? How long? How often? Oh, how often? Well, right now I'm like three or four days a week. Um, I, okay. yeah, I teach and I work and yeah, I, I have a show up right now and I'm doing all kinds of stuff for that. But, um, are you taking you know, up juggling, maybe Just juggling, really- <laughs> you know, like bookkeeping <laughs> office uh-huh. work, whatever you want. I'm your girl, right. you know, <laughs> I do it all. Right. Well, your work, you know, I really encourage, I want to encourage people to go to your website and take a look at, you know, the wide variety of works that you have there. One of the questions I'm curious to ask is, um, are there other artists that you love to continually look at? They might be a, a inspirational or or just satisfying to look at, both either living or dead? Yeah. Oh, God, that's a tough question. Um, yeah, I mean, hmm. Who Does it change at? all the time? It does. Um, it does. Um, you know, I, I, like, I can't, I can't not mention maybe like Edward Hopper, um, who's been Mm -hmm. an influence, you know, I can see that with the light, Mm -hmm. with the light. Yeah. And the sort of architectural subject. I was going to guess like Velasquez or Goya or. Well, I, I think when I was, you know, I was, I was looking at a lot of Casper David Friedrich for a while. I was mm-hmm. doing a lot of like atmospheric 
And I think he's like sort of trendy right now because um, yeah, there's a lot of like atmospheric like landscapes happening. Mm -hmm. um, yes. <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere. <laughs> I yeah. totally know what you mean. <laughs> well, speaking speaking of you know different kind of works, one of the things I was thinking about looking at your work, I, we, you talked a little bit about experimentation. Yeah. That that's sort of it seems to be creeping into your work more and more. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm curious to know how far out mm. uh, you're willing to take that. In other words, sculpture mm. or photography, printmaking dance mm -hmm. poetry you know or have you thought about doing other things or actually i do i i have an idea for a sculpture series um you know if time allows i will mm -hmm. get into it um i would love to do printmaking um that would be fantastic that would be great yeah yeah well actually your your spray paints with the stencils is a form of printmaking really it is. Well, yeah. that's how I developed it because I took um, at when I was an undergrad at SVA, I took a year of silkscreen with Larry Wright, who was Robert Rauschenberg's printmaker, silkscreen nice. master. Yeah. And I developed that um, technique of layering based on silkscreen. That'd be great. When you So yeah. you did mention that you work in series. Do your series, do they come to an end? Do you have a do you, do you, do they overlap or is it like I'm only working on one stop and then I'll work on something else? They do overlap. Um, you know, one thing will give me an idea for the next thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, yeah, just like life circumstances, you know, um, I could still be like living in Philadelphia right now, like investigating my street that I live on, you uh -huh. know, <laughs> if life hadn't happened differently. So, right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Have you ever revisited series? You ever put something to bed and then like, oh, wait, I'll bring that back. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. Like, um, you know, like I mentioned the stencil spray paint work, you right. know, when I was making those tiny little paintings, which is like really the first like that was like my first like real studio series mm -hmm. after undergrad. And um, they were really easy to paint because they were small and I could lay them flat and paint mm -hmm. on a table. And I it allowed me like a lot of control over the stencil. And now that I'm working larger, it's 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 different. It's harder to get that same control with the stencil. Yeah. Um, but um you know i'm just kind of figuring it out i think i think i have to be challenged by something mm -hmm. new in order to stay interested in what i'm that, doing that makes me in really interested to see what you're going to do within the next decade you know what the idea of that that you're not satisfied that you are changing that's that's i always think that's a healthy sign in a Thank lot you. of artists so Thank i've got you. time for just one more question simple yeah. question i ask a lot of artists what does making art do for you um, it just helps me feel like a person can, a connected person in the world, you know, mm -hmm. who has thoughts and feelings and ideas and mm -hmm. is, is, um, able to share them and, 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 you know, relate to communicate, you know, to communicate with other people. So, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> well, Dinah, I can't thank you enough for coming by and talking with me today about your work. I Thank do literally have twice as many questions. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> well, um, we can we can do another interview. We'll do another part two. Yeah. Uh, I also want to thank everybody who tuned in to watch our show today. We really appreciate your support. Of course, liking, sharing, and subscribing really helps our show. So we we love it when you do that. So again, Diana, thank you very much for coming by. Thank today. you, really Craig. I really appreciate your questions. Great questions. And thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.